Good morning, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations, and I'm Nova. And if this is your first time here, welcome to my cozy little corner of YouTube. I hope that you find this to be a warm, welcoming, inviting place where you can just drop your worries at the door. Think of it as like a little room that you come into to hang out with us. Uh, we call our community the Nomies. So you come in and you hang out with your Nomies. You drop your worries. You leave them outside the door. The bag man can check them. And you don't have to think about them. They don't exist for the time that you're in this channel. You don't have those worries. You don't have those stressors, those anxieties. They don't exist. You have permission to just let them go and sit and relax, take a deep breath. And I hope that you love to be here. And if it's not your first time here, welcome back, my Nomi. I am so happy to see you today. And of course, the same applies to you as always. Drop your worries, drop your stress, and let us hang out for a little while. So I am in a really, really good mood this morning. So to begin, I have coffee. So I'm drinking out of my I Solemnly Swear I'm Up to No Good mug. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, that's so good. I'm drinking um, cinnamon sugar cookie coffee with sugar cookie cream and gingerbread whipped cream. It's really good, you guys. It, out of curiosity, did anybody get the uh, gingerbread whipped cream? Um... I've talked about it quite a few times in the marshmallow whipped cream because um, the marshmallow whipped cream is the one I normally get um, or normally have been getting. I've only been getting them for a little while. I've only gotten them a few times, but I really love them. Uh, they are Target. They're at Target. They're one of their, their store brands. Um, I don't remember the name of the brand, but it's one of their new um, store brands. They have so many store brands. It's like hard to keep up with, um, but it's not good and gather or anything. Just look for the marshmallow whipped cream. And if they still have it, the gingerbread whipped cream. Um, I don't know if they're both seasonal flavors because I haven't been drinking or been uh, having them for very long. The marshmallow doesn't really taste like marshmallow, but it tastes like a really fancy like gourmet whipped cream. It is so good. Really highly recommend if you like whipped cream. Um, and then the gingerbread is gingerbread. And I finally was able to get some. It kept being sold out every time. Um, like I went, I got it one time. And then I went back two different times looking to see if the gingerbread was there. I got the marshmallow and I was like, oh, I want to try the gingerbread. Um, and finally, um, the third time I went, I was picking up some prescriptions and I actually had a little $5 um, coupon voucher thing. Cause if you get your prescriptions from Target, like every 10 prescriptions, they give you like a little $5 gift card thing. It's like a little piece of paper that you can use at Target, which is super fun. Nice little gift to you for like being on top of your, uh, medicine um and then I was like you know what let's go see if they have the gingerbread whipped cream it was like right after Christmas like day or two after Christmas and they did so I got it for free um but the gingerbread whipped cream and the marshmallow like their whipped cream is actually cheaper than the ready whip so it's really really good and it's actually a better deal so um it's really nice when you're feeling like having something a little special. I don't know about you guys, but having a like kind of bougie little coffee, it makes me feel so like, I don't know, like self care. Okay. It's like, oh, look at this like fancy little drink. I feel like I'm having like, you know, Starbucks or like little coffee shop coffee or something and like make it at home. <laughs> anyway, that's enough like random product placement because I like to tell you guys the things that I like. <laughs> Not sponsored by Target Whipped Cream. Um, so I'm in a really good mood because I got happy email. Um, and I mean, the, I have other reasons to be in a good mood, of course, like you guys are here. I like have an amazing community and everything, but I woke up in the middle of the night last night and okay. I don't normally talk about it, but I have nightmares a lot and I woke up from a nightmare. So I was like in a really bad mood. Um, and I looked at my phone and I had an email and it was a happy email email uh, from Marina. So I'm sure you guys have seen her around the YouTube streets, as they say, or around my cozy little corner, because she is always in the comments. She is so supportive, so sweet. Like she supports you guys too. She replies to your guys's comments. Like she is just like, she's like a 10 star person. Okay. 10 star know me. Um, and I love her so much, but she sent me an email and, uh, 
I'm not going to talk about the email itself because it was like a very personal email, but it was like a nice big email and basically was like, can I sponsor um, the snood? Because she wanted me to get the yarn for the Enid snood tutorial that I wanted to do. Um, and also some buttons for um, the Pokeball because I don't have any white buttons. And I was talking about this yesterday, trying to like debate and get your guys' opinions on how I should do it. And uh, that was like super unexpected and super, super sweet. Um, and I, it like really just turned around what could have ended up being like very grumpy kind of feeling morning um, and made it easy to persevere through and like, you know, be in a good mood. Um, and I'm very excited. I already went ahead and made a Joanne's order. Um, so I have lots of delicious yarn coming and buttons and they were actually running their like big like once a year I don't know if it's once a year really but like after Christmas sale that they run that's like their yarn I don't remember what it's called yarn extravaganza or something like that so um big twist yarn is 250 right now for their um for their regular yarn and like like all of the yarns that I buy basically are on sale um, and the buttons were actually on sale too. They were like 40% off right now. Um, they're, they're running like sales on all of their like craft stuff. I don't know. I was like, dude, every single thing I bought was on sale and like good sales, like pretty close to half off. So I was actually able to get like a lot of stuff. I'm super, super excited about it. Okay. Um, so I got the stuff I need for Enid Snood, I got buttons, and I also got some other, um, yarn that I'm so excited to play with, some things that I've been, uh, really wanting. Um, we don't have a Joann's in my town, we only have a Hobby Lobby and a Walmart as far as, um, yarn goes. So, um, when I get Joann's, it's like either I have to travel to get Joann's or I have to make an order to get Joann's. And with shipping, it's like you can't just get like a couple skeins of yarn or skeins of yarn. I'm trying to remind myself it is pronounced skein. I just found out like officially that it's skein, so I'm trying to like switch to saying that. Um... So I can't just buy like a couple skeins of it. Like if I want yarn, like just, just grab a couple of them. I just have the two choices. Um, so there is Joann's yarn because Joann's is actually my favorite store brand yarn. They have, so it's really soft. Their like big twist um, value yarn is super soft to me and they have a ton of colors. So there were some colors I've actually been wanting um, that I ran out of. So thank you so much, Marina. And I am like, just so grateful. So, so grateful that seriously just like made my entire 2023. <laughs> um, and I thought it was so cute that she called it happy email. That made me smile. Um, honestly, the whole thing made me smile. And, and I, she was saying, um, not, not like, I'm not going to talk about most of the email, but she did say at one point, like she hadn't sent happy mail yet, but she had wanted to. So this was like perfect or something. And I just want you guys to know, and Marina to know which I did tell her but just again you guys don't have to send happy mail like I am super super grateful and happy and I am like not happy mail like happy happy worded every time you guys are hearing you're talking and you're chatting and you're being you know sweet and supportive and you're telling me about your life and you're telling me about your projects and you're hanging out um in my cozy little corner I I'm happy you guys like I love you guys so much um and if you want to send happy mail of course that's exciting and fun but you don't have to send happy mail um but yeah so I just had to talk about that I had to gush a little bit about Marina um, if you guys haven't seen her in the comments, definitely like look for the really long comments and those are usually going to be her um, because she is just super supportive and like a really good friend. And I'm just so grateful to have met her um, and to have met you guys. Like I love my community. I really, really love my nomies. Um, you guys are all awesome. So uh, if this was your first time here, I'm I guess you got a really good example of how amazing our community is. Um people will like if you comment in the comments and you like are having a bad day people will comment like reply back to you and be like you know I'm here for you like I hope that it gets better and hugs and like whatever like people are just super sweet in this community you guys if you're looking for like a loving supportive positive place to be this is that corner of the world this cozy little corner um, speaking of happy mail, um, I also got a straggler Christmas card and I'm assuming this is probably going to be the last one cause I haven't gotten any other ones, um, in a while. This one is from Andrea and I literally love this. It's 
sparkly and my favorite color of blue. I love the blue of these two gnomes on the side and it's glittery. So freaking cute. Make sure that focuses for you guys. Aren't they adorable? And they're holding little hearts. Ah, I love them so much. Um, it says, Tis the season for all things warm and cozy, like the special wish for you. Thanks, Nova, for all your fantastic videos. I am loving the Santa gnome heart. Merry Christmas, Andrea um, Wagoner. I think uh, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, she has her full name on here, if I remember right. Um, I'm like 100% sure. So, uh, but thank you so much, Andrea, for that Christmas card. I love it. And honestly, I kind of love the straggler Christmas cards because it keeps the Christmas spirit going a little bit longer. It just keeps that um, happy, joyful kind of vibe going a little bit longer. Um, so I am totally, totally cool with getting some straggler Christmas cards. Um Oh, and she did washi tape on her envelope. You guys can see this washi tape down at the bottom. And there actually was washi tape on the back of it, but I stole it. <laughs> it was on the back of the card. I took the washi tape off of it and used it for me. Because I love washi tape. And it was really cute Christmas washi tape. So, yeah, I'm big on repurposing things. So if I see something on, like, an envelope, I'm like, well, I'm going to take this off of here and use it if I can. And washi tape is really uh, reusable because it's really easy to take off and put back on things. So I really appreciated that. I like washi tape and stickers and, like, just fun little extra bling. Um, I think they're a really fun thing to do. Um, so I don't have anything new to show you guys on my current whips that I was talking about yesterday, but, um, I wanted to come on here and just kind of chit chat with you guys. And then I think I'm going to make a scrunchie this morning because I currently have just been using hair ties. Um, and ever since I got into crochet and made my first scrunchie, I have been using crocheted scrunchies, um, which you use these hair ties to make a crocheted scrunchie. They feel so much softer and just like better on my hair. So like when I use one of these, I wrap it around three times and it's kind of tight, but two times isn't tight enough and it'll fall out. Well, if I do um, a scrunchie, which I do like velvet yarn for the scrunchies, um, then I only wrap it around two times and it's like perfect. It's not too tight, but it holds really well. Um, and I like to try to sleep with my hair up to keep it from tangling. So at least like the top half of my hair, I'll put it like up on top of my head and you want something comfy for that. So I thought I would show you guys how I make scrunchies. Um, I don't know if it's like the official way to make scrunchies. I think there's probably a lot of ways to make scrunchies. They're a pretty simple thing. Um, and if you've never made one, you'll see when I'm showing you how I make mine. They're really as simple as you think they are. So if you are interested in making a scrunchie, I'm going to launch into a little bit of a crochet tutorial for a scrunchie. Um, super simple and really, really nice if you have like hair that you like to put up <laughs> or gifts. They make, they make really good gifts also. I haven't gifted. No, wait, I did gift some. I actually made three. I gifted three. I did like a little three pack. I, I want, I have like the um, intention of making a lot of scrunchies um, and making little packs to sell on my Etsy shop. And then I make scrunchies and I use them and I keep them. I need to make more scrunchies. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop into that. But I hope everybody has a wonderful day and I will see you in the scrunchie portion of the video. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay, guys. So, before I actually, um, quite a while ago, well, I shouldn't say quite a while ago, I literally have only been crocheting for like a year and a half now, <laughs> but um, a while back, <laughs> um, let's see, it was probably pretty close to a year ago, I made up a bunch of scrunchies to see what kind of stitches I liked, and I did them all differently. I used different thicknesses of the like velvety sort of yarn, um, so I used some thinner ones, some thicker ones. Um, I did like double crochets, half double crochets, um, doing more and less stitches in the other stitches because you like increase as you go um, to figure out what I liked the best. And I know what I liked the best. However, I don't remember what I did exactly. So thankfully, I'm more organized now um, and I can show you guys a picture. I'll insert a picture actually right now um, of those scrunchies that I had made and you'll see that they're all different. Some are more like wavy, curly type of looking, um, some are like bigger, you know. So it's all personal preference, so I recommend playing around with it to see how you like your scrunchies. Um, but since I'm more organized now, <clears throat> I think I will 
um, begin to play around with scrunchies again and figure out which way I like it the best. And I'm actually going to write notes down <laughs> this time so that I remember. One of the things I don't remember is what size hook I used. So I'm just going to go with a five millimeter and I'm using this yarn which doesn't have a ball band, but it's a pretty squishy pink, um, kind of shiny sort of yarn. Um, and I remember I got this for scrunchies and I did use this to make scrunchies quite a bit. So the first thing I'm going to recommend, and this is, well, I won't recommend it just for, I probably shouldn't be recommending people use lighters, but <laughs> I will say the way that I usually do this so that this doesn't, um, flake off like this while I'm working with it because all of the like velvety yarns uh, do that. Um, what I do is I just very quickly burn the tip just like that and then it cools instantly and um, it won't come off now because it kind of melts these fibers together. I accidentally lit it on fire, which sometimes happens and it's not a big deal. It's not going to like crazily burn. It'll go out on its own um, or you can just blow on it real quick. But so it did give a little dark spot, but if you don't let it kind of catch on fire, if you're a little bit more quick with your um, burning um, going, you can just kind of go back in and out of the flame until it's, you know, nicely melted how you want it to be. Um, then it won't even get a discoloration at all. So um, I didn't want to, I was trying to make it quick for the video, but <laughs> I don't mind that though. That's going to be hidden anyway. So you can do that. <clears throat> and then the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to want to attach to our um, hair tie. And I'm going to leave myself a long tail because one of the things that's hardest about these is um, making these crunchies is that um, the tails want to come out because they are really, really silky soft yarns. So what I'm doing is just attaching to my hair tie. And then I'm actually going to tie this in a knot with the tail and the working yarn. Um, just so that it's like attached on really nicely to begin. And I'm going to make it nice and tight. Okay, and then now we're attached. We've got our starting loop and we're going to work over the tail as we go. So you can just hold it alongside your hair tie, kind of like you would for a magic circle and um, work over the tail and the hair tie at the same time. So the first thing that you want to do to start out your scrunchie, basically regardless of how you do it, is you're going to do single crochets all the way around. And because it can be a little difficult to see, I would recommend putting a stitch marker into that first single crochet and then just single crocheting around. Now the key to um, making your scrunchie nice, I guess, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> is to make sure that as you go or at some, you know, intervals, you stop and you kind of scrunch up the crochet so that you don't, when you stretch your hair tie, you don't um, have gaps. So basically just push it nice and tight together, your stitches nice and tight together as you go. This is your foundation row, so making sure that you have a lot of stitches in this row is going to be, or this round is going to be um, really important to making sure that when you stretch it later when you're using your hair tie, you don't get gaps. But you just single crochet around. There's no set number or anything. It's just going to be whatever's comfortable to you. It's going to look like this. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by like if you were stretching it. Like let's just say this wasn't bunched up tightly, which I'm kind of doing as I go. When you stretch it, you would see, you know, when you go to put it on, you would see the black. So I just like to, as I go, keep it scrunched up and then maybe even stop at intervals also and scrunch it up because um, I want to make sure it's nice and tight on there. And I'm just working over my tail. The reason I'm working over my tail rather than weaving it in, even though I was saying that um, they don't like to stay very well, is because I have tried both ways. And when you're using velvet yarn, um, you can't weave it in in that way where you like use your needle to catch part of the fabric of the stitch and kind of get it in to the, into the fiber of the stitch. 
because this is like a solid piece. Um, so weaving it back and forth, it just makes it so that there are shorter tails to pop out. Um, so my hope is the long tail being worked in um, will help with it staying. So I'm just going to continue to single crochet around. Super, super simple. And I feel like a five millimeter uh, hook is feeling like a good choice for this. You can use whatever you want. Honestly, I think you could literally just use whatever you feel comfortable with. Hair ties are really, really, um, or scrunchies are really forgiving and really versatile. You guys see how like you scrunch that up and you get so much more hair tie. So just basically push it up, keep going, do your single crochets until we get back to the beginning and then we're going to do the next row. And one of the things I played with was like how many rows I wanted to add. Um, and I believe that I chose that I liked doing one more row because I think I did do two for some of them and I felt like it was too big. Um, and then also that uh, I think I liked half double crochets over double crochets because they were squishier and more fluffy. And I preferred that like fluffy, squishy kind of texture. I'm probably not going to push it back anymore. I probably could push it back a little bit more than this, but it is super tight at the beginning already. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to make it like so tight that, uh, it's not soft, like that it doesn't, I don't know. That's just like my preference. So basically you can pull them back as much as you want to. The whole goal is just to make it so that um, it won't gap and you won't see the elastic. So I think this is good. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut this yarn and I'm going to kind of pull on it and hold like hold on my scrunchie sorry make sure I'm in the middle of the frame um, I'm gonna kind of hold on my scrunchie and pull and it's gonna kind of bunch up which is what I'm looking for and then I'm gonna cut it <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and just pull off a little bit of this fluff because it's gonna come off on its own and then I'm just going to kind of give a little tug on my scrunchie so that that tail um, goes in and you can't see it anymore and then just give a little test if you want you could even slip stitch to the beginning and give a little pull test to see how you're liking your scrunchie um, if you're getting gaps you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit more so this is just about feeling it out like I said no set amount of numbers or anything like that because it's just going to depend on how you crochet going to depend on your preference going to depend on your yarn going to depend on the hook how big your hair tie is all right that's good so I've got this nice um, solid onion ring. No, I'm just kidding. This nice solid um, velvety ring going. I'm going to go ahead and take my um, stitch marker out, making sure I don't lose that stitch. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one yarn over because I'm going to do a half double crochet. And I'm just going to go ahead and half double crochet into that same stitch. Oops. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker back into the top of that half double crochet. That's going to be my first stitch of the round. That um, chain was just to get to height and I'm not counting it as anything. <clears throat> not that, you know, like I said, you're not keeping count. So, um, and for this one, I'm going to go with two half double crochets. Let's see how two half double crochets per stitch looks. So when you get onto this round, you're going to, into the top of each single crochet, work two half double crochets. 
And the reason that you want to increase is because this is what gives your scrunchie the like wavy ripply sort of effect that they get. I'm going to work up a little bit and see how I'm liking two um, half double crochets and see if I want to do three. And remember when you are working two into each stitch, not to skip that next stitch because it can get kind of hidden. Like if, if I'm relaxed, the next stitch is actually kind of hidden by this current half double crochet. So make sure you kind of pull it back as you're working so you don't miss those single crochets. Because if you miss them, then you're not going to get, you know, the rippling effect that you're wanting. Let's see. So it's looking like that. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So I'm going to continue around and I'm just going to do two half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. <music> So I made my way uh, back around doing two half double crochets in each stitch and I'm super happy with the ruffle um, wave, whatever you want to call it. And you can kind of uh, mess with it and make it look pretty like you can you can adjust like how tight the waves are just by kind of shaping them with your hands. But anyway, um, so I'm at the last stitch here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this stitch marker out, make sure I keep the uh, end of the top of that half double crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch to end that right there and then let's see what do I think the best way to do this would be I know that I want to do something really secure with this tail So I think I'm going to try something. I'm going to go into the stitch that's in front and I'm not going to go into the top of it. I'm going to go a little further down almost to um, almost to the top of the single crochet that it's in, but not really kind of like in between in the middle, like uh, in between the stitches. And I'm going to do another slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut myself a nice long tail. just like that and then pull up on that and I chained one because it creates a little knot at the end and I slip stitched again for a little bit further down just so that the knot wouldn't be like right like standing out if that makes sense because my slip stitch was up here and then the knot would have been like up here but because I went down and then the knot is like in line with the rest of it and also just I think it'll make it a little more secure because this yarn is slippery you know um, so then I'm going to grab a needle. So grab your yarn needle. Go ahead and thread it on here. And I am going to melt the tip of this. Um, just because I'm going to be sewing with it and it's going to want to keep coming off as I go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, weave my tail in. So um, my knot comes out up here and it's super nice. You can't see it. Blends right in. So I'm going to go and I'm going to thread the needle down through the tops of these stitches down into this single crochet round down here. And I'm just going to pull it through. So once you have it um, down into the single crochet round. I just went ahead and popped it out down here for a second. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of hold it flat and take my yarn needle and I'm gonna push it through all of these single crochets. So push it through as many as you can and then pull it out again. And you can either continue to go around the circle doing this or you can change directions and go back over that area. Which I will do just because I have a nice long length and I want to do my absolute darndest to make sure that this stays. So I'm just going to keep working in these little increments because that's how much um, mine likes to go through at a time. 
So I went through a couple little increments. And now my yarn's trying to get wrapped around there. <laughs> and pulling it through. Just like that. So I'm just going to keep doing that for a little bit. Work my way around the circle a little bit. Kind of lay this flat. And stick my needle through. And the way that I kind of make sure I don't come out this side is I just kind of put my hand like that. And then I'll feel if it uh, comes through the other side. I'll feel if it breaks on through to the other side. And then doing it again. All right. I think that's a good amount. And like I said, you can um, you can go all the way around the circle if you want to. You can go part of the way around the circle. You can turn and go back and forth over and over. Um, it's really just up to personal preference. When you go to turn, make sure you don't just go back in the exact same stitch. Go one uh, either forward or backward. Otherwise, you're just going to undo what you just what you just did. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. Work my way back a little bit. And I went down to the single crochet round because I feel like it's the tightest, um, like close together, like hopefully the best place that it'll stay. If anybody else makes scrunchies and has recommendations on keeping your tails from coming out, let me know. <clears throat> With amigurumi, um, using this type of yarn, super easy because you can just hide your tail up inside the body. Then I'm just going to cut that right up to the project, take off any little fuzzies, and then give it a little pull. And there we have our finished scrunchie. And you can, like I said, play with these and warp them how you want them to look and everything. And this was with two half double crochets, so uh, yeah, I think I tried three half double crochets before and I just thought it was too much. And then, like I said, I tried double crochets and I just didn't like it very much. I thought it was too long and I wanted them to be more squishy stitches. I actually think I maybe even put a few too many um, in my foundation row. Um, it'll definitely not show through when I pull it. But, um, and I can spread these out a little because they are a little bit, um, a little more clustered up in certain areas. Um, but anyway, uh, you can just mess around with it. Basically. It's very, very simple, but I thought I would show you guys what I was doing since I was going to be making one anyways. Uh, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.